You know, when you learn the secrets to hitting your irons flush, it becomes really easy. You look forward to hitting that mid iron out of the fairway because you know you're going to hit a good one and most of your playing partners are going to struggle hitting those shots. Now I've put together three of my all time best videos that are going to share with you some of those real secrets to hitting crisp irons. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I'm really excited. I've got an awesome video for you today. We're going to talk about how you can get out on the course, step over top of one of those iron shots and be completely confident that you're going to hit the ball solid. You're not gonna chunk, you're not gonna thin the ball, you're not gonna hit it way to the right, way to the left. You're gonna make that really crisp, clean contact. We're gonna go over three of the most important things to do that, and it all starts with covering the ball. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about how you can cover that golf ball and really compress it. Now let's dive right into it. How do we cover the golf ball? And first, let me talk about what the wrong way to do this is, which would be a flip or a scoop. And I think a lot of times people misinterpret. They think that you try to flip or scoop to get the ball up in the air. So if I'm flipping this golf ball or my hands are flipping, a lot of times what I've found is this is an effort for power. So we're gonna talk about how to be powerful without flipping that. But if I flip one here, you're gonna see how my hands are leaning back and it makes it really difficult to hit the ball solid. So there, I tried to hit it solid, but I scooped it a little bit. I picked it clean off the ground, kind of thinned it. I came up a good 20 yards short of the green and it really just didn't have that compression that I really want on there. It feels more powerful because I'm pushing my wrist at the golf ball or I'm pushing my wrist which would be this way toward the target. That feels like that should speed up the club head, but that's actually not the right way to speed up the club head. If we cover the golf ball, we can get that club head to accelerate under its own power to really whip through contact and make golf a lot easier. So the first move, let's go over that again here. If I'm flipping, I'm taking my right palm, my right hand, and I'm pushing it toward the target. If you look at the, the muscles on the inside of your forearm, those are flexing to get you to push your hand forward toward the target. A lot of times also when that hand pushes forward, I run out of room here and my arms will start to chicken wing or my left elbow will bend as I come into the follow through. That's from that pushing type motion. Now, again, like I said, that seems powerful. I'm using a lot more muscular force here, but I'm not creating the acceleration that I want in the club head. Now, if we cover the golf ball, and all that means is you can kind of think of the loft on this club face at address as being up into the sky. What you're gonna feel like is you're turning this loft down and you're gonna cover that loft on top of the golf ball. So if I'm looking at this from address, I'm feeling like, this is the sensation I have in my mind, is that I'm covering and I'm taking this golf club and covering it on top of the golf ball like that. That's a sensation. Again, it's not exactly what's happening, but that's a feeling. You'll also feel like your right hand, your right palm, instead of flipping, it's gonna feel like the right palm of your hand covers on top of that golf ball also. So I'm really getting my body, my hand. You'll notice that my posture is on top of that golf ball. I'm not standing up out of the shot like this. Everything is covering on top of that. So it's the club face covering it, it's the right palm covering it, and it's the fact that I'm still in my posture covering on top of the golf ball, which is where that term covering the golf ball, compressing the golf ball, really, you know, uh, uh, almost like de-lofting the club comes from. So why, how could that create a lot of speed? It doesn't seem like that's gonna be very powerful. It seems like it should be more powerful to really flip that club on through there. This actually happens because when you're in this covering type position, you're actually still releasing the club. The club is on the way to releasing, but it's the fact that you still have this forward shaft lean that allows you to whip that club on through. So if I can imagine here, let me take a club that has forward shaft lean on it and let me pull the butt into this grip up. Watch what happens to the club head. It really accelerates on through there. A very small amount of force on the butt end of this club can get that club to whip on through. The only way I can do that though is to have some lag in forward shaft lean as I'm starting down. So here, as I'm starting my downswing, there's a couple things I want you to feel. Number one, I want you to feel like your right wrist is bent back, really, really bent back. Number two, and this is very important, I want you to feel like you're swinging inside out or out to the right. I almost feel like when you're swinging this club, if I'm facing the camera here, I'm swinging the club this way, about 45 degrees out to the right. As I open my body, that's gonna allow that club to square up. All right, so that's the first two pieces, wrist back, swinging out to the right. And then number three, I still wanna be releasing this golf club, but I wanna release it in front of this golf ball. So if I put a golf ball kind of down my target line here, say four or five feet in front, I'm imagining that I'm going from this covered position to releasing that golf ball and now I've gotten rid of all these wrist angles up here. 
that allows me to get this compression on the golf ball at contact and still release it to get the speed. Now, let's put those pieces together. On the first couple reps, I want you to do five or six of these while you're practicing. Focus only on the right wrist. The right wrist is staying back, and I'm gonna feel like I keep my body rotating all the way through to a good full finish to accelerate all the way around. So here, I'm really gonna feel like my right wrist is back. That club is covering on top of it, and I'm gonna accelerate to a good full finish position. Let's see if we can hit a nice one here. There we go, that one's right at the flag. Just probably 10 feet right of the flag, hit that one nice and solid. So there, again, the right wrist is back. I'm still getting speed because my, I'm naturally gonna release out in front. The second five or 10 reps I want you to do here, we're gonna focus in on that inside out motion that we mentioned. So if we start to come over the top and feel like we have this big lag angle, I'm gonna start chopping down into it. To be nice and shallow and thin and hit that ball cleanly off the ground, I need to have the sensation that I'm swinging this way, out to the right. It's only when my body opens up, and you can see as my hips start to open, that's gonna square that up to where I'm swinging toward the target. A lot of players keep their hips square, and they hit at it with their hands and arms, with their wrist. That's not what we wanna do. We wanna have the momentum of the body, which we're gonna talk about in a little bit, carry it through there. So the sensation is I'm swinging out to the right, and since my body's opening up, that actually squares me up going toward the target. So this second five or so reps, to get a little more comfortable with it, right wrist back, you're swinging to the right and you're gonna let your opening body square everything up. So let's go ahead and try that out. There we go, another good one. Just barely left of the flag on that one. I actually hit that one too good, that's gonna be a little long. Yeah, just about 10 or 15 feet past the flag. Now, from there, let's go to the last piece here this releasing out in front, which is the last key to covering the golf ball. Now, if I'm covering this golf ball, again, the misconception a lot of players have is they're gonna get this wrist angle here, I'm gonna be down, and then I'm just gonna hold all that off. If I do that, I lose tons of speed. I need to release this golf club toward that golf ball out in front. So I'm gonna have these same ideas, these same sensations. Wrist back, swinging out to the right, but when I go ahead and swing through, I'm gonna go ahead and let that all release. Everything's going out in front of this golf ball. I'm gonna let all that energy from the club release toward the target. And that's also what keeps it really square as you're coming through. That nice square face gliding through the golf ball, going out toward the target, that's gonna make things a lot easier. If I feel like I'm holding off on it, it's gonna open, I'm gonna block it to the right. A lot of bad stuff's gonna happen. So I have to go ahead and let that club head go as I'm making this swing. Let's give that one a whirl. There you go, another one nice on the green, just a little right of the flag. So those are really gonna help you to what's called cover or compress the golf ball, those three areas there. That's just the first piece. I got some really, more, another few great tips that are gonna help you to build on this and get your game even more consistent. Okay, so that's a covering of the golf ball. That's really gonna help to get those wrist angles really good. Now let's talk about how we can get a lot of that, you know, feeling like you're pushing again, that flipping, that scooping, like the arms are doing all the work. How do we get away from that and get the momentum coming from the body? And there's actually a pretty common mistake that brings us to our second key, which is if we're gonna be a really good iron player, we have to let the body build the momentum and then the arm just add a little speed to it. So to get that momentum from the, bottom, from the body, the body has to continue to rotate through the shot. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned that if we wanna cover this golf ball, it's the forward shaft lean from the club, which is actually gonna be releasing past the golf ball. That's completely fine, that's what we want. It's this right wrist at impact being kind of angled back, feeling like your palm is covering the golf ball, and then that's releasing after impact. And then third, I mentioned that your upper body or your posture, you have to be kind of down where your upper body's feeling like it's on top of this golf ball, which is gonna help you to feel that sensation of covering that. Now, what most players do, what they get wrong, is that when they're hitting this iron shot, they tend to let their hips come forward, their upper body comes up and back, and now all of a sudden, if I was to have this covered motion to really have the forward shaft lean, I couldn't reach the golf ball. All right, if I was covered, I'd be here, but if I stand up out of my posture, all of a sudden I can't reach the golf ball. So what do I do to solve this problem? I start to flip and scoop, like we talked about we don't wanna do earlier, and that creates all that bad contact. So if we wanna get the momentum from the body, there's two things that have to happen here. We have to get it in a position to where I can be down and covered and stay in my posture, 
but then still have everything moving on through. That's where the big key comes in. A lot of players that try to cover the golf ball, what they'll do is they'll stay down in their posture, but then they just stay down in there forever, right? So it ends up being all arms, it doesn't work, and it feels terrible. What we actually wanna have happen here is, as I start my downswing, if you imagine my belt buckle, there's a laser shooting out of that. As I start my downswing, I want that to be going down toward the golf ball. So my hips are kinda of down toward the golf ball, my chest is down toward the golf ball. But then as I finish my swing, now all that comes up. My belt buckle is facing up toward the target. My chest is nice and high. If I had a laser shooting out of my shirt buttons, it would be nice and high here. And I'm coming all the way along around my chin's even nice and high. That allows me to complete the swing. And that's when I actually have extension. So early extension, as a lot of people call it, or what would be the opposite of covering the golf ball, is when my upper body extends early. It extends in the downswing as I'm coming into the golf ball. The proper extension or later extension would be I'm coming down, covering the golf ball, and then I extend up as I come through the fall through. The cool thing about this, it ties in with exactly what we talked about when we took this butt in the club and we let it whip through the ball. If I get a bunch of this lag and now I'm down in my posture, as I extend up, I'm taking this grip and I'm pulling it up that allows the club to whip on through with a ton of momentum. Now I could use the momentum of my body. Now I can use my hips and the big muscles of my body to carry that club through there. So let's try this out. Do another five or 10 reps for me. As you start your downswing, feel like everything, until your left arm is about halfway in the downswing, feel like everything's getting closer to the ground. My belt buckle's down, my chest is down, everything's down. I feel like I'm really gonna be close to this ball covering on top of it. And then as you finish, so we're gonna pause in that position a few times. So go back to your setup, pause and fill that position. And then as I finish, I'm letting everything whip on through. Now my belt buckle's up, my chest is up, my chin is up, and I'm coming to that good full finish position. Five or 10 of those, just pausing in each piece. Pause here, and then pause in the good full finish. You're gonna to start to build that muscle memory. And what you're gonna feel, the sensation I get, is almost like my body is doing a lot of the momentum and the club is just swinging along. My club and arms are just swinging with the momentum of our body. Like we talked about early, those hands swinging out to the right. As my body momentum opens up, that squares the face. That gets this club really working with us rather than against us. So let's try that out again. Watch as I first start my downswing, my chest feels like it's getting closer to the ground, then I'm coming to that good full finish. Let's give it a whirl, see if I can cover this one and really let that club release out in front of this golf ball. All right, nice and solid, definitely covered it. You can see I stayed in my posture. All right, so we covered piece number one. We gotta cover the ball. We gotta really compress it. Piece number two, we gotta create momentum from the body by using those hips and really coming through to that good full finish. And piece number three, we have to make sure that we're shallow and we don't chop down into this golf ball. If we start to come start a downswing and our butt into the club, imagine there's a laser pointing out of this. It's pointing inside the golf ball. Now all of a sudden I'm gonna chop down into this or again, if I feel myself starting to come down really steeply, what's the natural thing? I bet you're a really good athlete and you do this without even having to think about it. You start down a little steep and then to shallow that out, you let the hips come forward, you let the body back out, and then all of a sudden you flip a little bit to keep yourself from slamming this club down into the, into the golf, into the ground. What we have to do now is to shallow that club out. So if I was making a swing here and I paused again, kind of in the first half of my downswing, I want the butt end of that club to be pointing either, if we're looking from down the line, either at the golf ball or a little outside the golf ball, so that now, again, as I extend on through, that club's coming nicely down the plane line and I can whip on through there, get that club to release in front without having to shallow it out. If I start down steep again, if I try to cover it, bam, I'm slamming down into the ground. So what you're naturally gonna do, if you start down steep, you're gonna stand up and you're gonna flip. So all these things tie into each other. Now you remember in the first part of this video, I talked about how you wanna have this sensation that you're swinging out to the right. This is really gonna pair up with what I'm about to talk about here. I wanna feel like that club is shallowed out there and it feels like I'm swinging out to the right. So if I pause myself halfway down and I didn't open my body at all, my body was square, I wanna feel like I'm in a position where I could swing this way. All right, that club would be really shallow here. I'm coming away from the inside. The only thing that squares that up is now 
as my body rotates on through, that brings that club coming through and allows it to whip on through. So if you imagine, if I get this club way to the inside and I open up my body, look how that really whips the club on through. So I'm just opening my body and the momentum of the club wants it to whip through from shallow, shallow position. What I don't want to do here, if I was steep and I opened up my body, watch what's going to happen. That club's going to want to really get stuck under, really chop down. It's almost going to want to hit me. I'm working against the momentum of the club. If I'm shallow, I can open up and work with the momentum of the club. So here, I want you to make a couple practice swings, pause halfway down, and really feel like to you, before you're opening your hips, you're setting up to swing to this golf bag over here. I'm just gonna swing way to the right like that. If I was to hit a golf ball doing that, without opening my body, it would look something like this. Way over there, I think I probably hit that one in the water, almost 30, 45 degrees right. <clears throat> That's because I didn't let the momentum of my body open everything up. I'm gonna make that same swing now, but I'm gonna go ahead and open up my hips and that's gonna sling everything toward the target. That's a real big key there. Look at all the tour players. Look at their body at contact. You're not gonna see anybody in this position on the PGA Tour. You'll see a lot of guys that are opening the hips at contact, really finishing that swing coming back to the left. So the third key here is you're gonna feel like halfway down, the butt end of your club is pointing way out to the right and you're gonna feel like that club is nice and shallow, then you let your body open up to square back up the face. Let's give that a whirl. There we go, I might hit that one the best of any of them. All right, so let's recap on these really good keys. Number one, we wanna cover the ball. That happens from my right wrist, my club face, and my body all being on top of the golf ball. The big key there is that I can't hold this angle forever. I have to release that club after contact. I don't wanna be flipping into here. I wanna be feeling like that club swinging to the right and my right hand is covering on top of that golf ball. Number two, we have to use the momentum of the body. If I stop my momentum and I keep everything feeling like it's down toward the ground, I never come up out of that, I'm gonna to have to use all hands and arms. You're naturally not gonna do that. What you're gonna do is early extend and start to flip doing that. We don't wanna do that. We have to make sure that we get that nice squat. Everything is staying covered over top of the golf ball, but then as we come to the finish, we're really letting the belt buckle, the chest, the chin, everything come up. And again, that's gonna whip this club on through. Let the club do the work for you. Then number three, we can't be steep. If I start down and feel like my club shaft is steep like this, as I open up, that's gonna get me in a terrible position. I need to feel like I'm shallowing out, swinging way out to the right, and then let my opening body carry the club toward the target. If we do those three pieces, we're gonna put them all together, we're gonna hit those nice, crisp, clean golf shots, and you're gonna feel really, really confident when you're sitting over top of your iron shots. Hey guys, welcome back. Now we all wanna hit those solid irons. We all really wanna compress that golf ball. And think in your mind that player that you know, they may not be very big, they may not be very strong, but when they hit a golf ball, it sounds heavy on the face. It has a loud boom to it. Even though the swing doesn't look very hard, that ball takes off, it penetrates through the air. They're one of the longest hitters in your group, even though they may not have quite as much club head speed as some other players. Well, that's what we all wanna be. We all wanna be that guy that has that heavy hit, that really solid strike, and it feels like every single one of them is really, really solid. What is it that happens for the opposite players. A lot of times what I see are players that are losing forward shaft lean. They're kind of flipping the club through contact here. And instead of having that heavy, powerful hit, the ball just kind of floats up in the air. Maybe we lose that shot to the right. It starts to leak off to the right and it goes into the rough. Maybe it even slices a little bit when we really hit one bad. And it really just feels weak. You swing hard, the harder you swing, the weaker it goes, the shorter it goes. So that's the first problem. When pros are hitting the golf ball, when players that have that heavy hit are hitting the golf ball, what they're doing is they're taking loft off this club. So my hands are in front of the golf club, in front of the head at impact, the shaft is leaning forward, and they're taking loft off of the natural loft of this golf club. So if I'm swinging you know, an eight iron here, pros are taking about 30% of the loft off the club. Every club's a little bit different, but a, an eight iron probably has, you know, let's call it 37 degrees of loft, something like that on it. They're taking that all the way down. Pros are taking that all the way down to 26, 25 degrees aloft when they're actually hitting the ball by getting that shaft leaning forward. 
when you do that and it takes that loft off there, it's like hitting a golf ball with a hammer. You're taking that loft off and it's transferring all that weight into the golf ball. Now, if I took the opposite approach to that, imagine I'm hitting a flop shot and the face is wide open, I could swing 200 miles an hour. I could swing as hard as I want to, but that ball is just gonna glance across. That's why sometimes you feel like you're swinging really hard, the ball's not going anywhere. So that's the first piece. Number one, we gotta de-loft that club. And I'm gonna show you guys a great trick to make that happen to get that heavier hit. Then number two, we gotta hit that club face when it's closing down. So a lot of times players will have that face opening up a bit Again, that weaker shot that kind of flies to the right, maybe even that slice that floats up in the air, that's opening the face. And what happens there when I open this face, even if I have forward shaft lean, if I open that face, I'm adding loft to it. So I need to take off loft by having forward shaft lean, and I need to take off even more loft by hitting a little bit of a draw for most players. Now pros can hit a fade or a draw, that's getting really, really precise with this. But for most players, I say, let's go ahead and hit that nice, low, powerful draw. If you overdo it, maybe you get a couple hooks in there, but you're gonna be hitting it longer. You're gonna be hitting a lot of great quality shots. So if we can deal off the club and get it to draw, we're gonna be way better off than most of the players that we're gonna be playing. So now let's talk about a little trick that we can get to actually make this happen. It's all great in theory. We say, okay, I understand the heavy hit. I understand how pros are doing that, but I can't do it myself. All right, let's have a cheat where we can make this happen. So the first thing we're gonna do, let's go ahead and set up to this golf ball with our feet kind of kind of together, only about five or six inches, four inches or so, a club head width apart directly in front of this golf ball. So I'm gonna imagine I'm gonna hit it this way. Now what I want you to do from there is I want you to take your left foot and I want you to open it about 45 degrees so it looks like this. Then I want you to pick up your right foot and I want you to match that to your left foot. Okay, so now both of my toes are even with each other. They're facing about 45 degrees in front. If you look at that ball position, it's kind of on my right heel. I may be a little bit too far forward there. Maybe just toward the back center of my stance will be perfect as far as this. Now, the reason I'm using this crazy forward stance is because now that's gonna force me to get some forward shaft lean, force me to get in front of this golf ball, and it's really gonna help me to compress that golf ball and hit it low. I want you to about four or five shots and just try to get that ball to fly as low as you can. You don't want to go more than say 30 or 40 yards while you're doing this, but I'm really going to try to deal off that club, really get that worm burner. So that's exactly what that one did. It kind of took off, probably went closer to 100 and 120 yards, even though I barely swung just because it had a lot of pop to it. It really transferred a lot of energy to it. So the next thing I'm going to do after I've done a few of those and I get used to hitting it low, that's the de-lofting part that we talked about. Now we gotta make sure that we're gonna hit that draw. Now again, does every player have to hit a draw? No, I like to play a fade. There's a lot of pros that play a fade. I'm not saying that the draw is the only way to go, but I'm saying for those of you who aren't getting as heavy a hit as you'd like, hitting that draw is gonna transfer a lot more energy into it. It's gonna get you hitting it farther, and you're really gonna have a lot more fun playing this game if we can do that. So this time, what I want you to do, still have that forward shaft lean, but really feel like you turn those hands down. If I had my left wrist, I'm gonna turn my logo of my glove to the ground, and I'm gonna feel like my hand releases by doing this, keeping that logo of the glove to the ground. So if I was exaggerating that with a golf club, it would be this motion. I'm letting that club de-loft and rotate around. Now I'm really exaggerating here. This would be taking that club face and bring it to outside of the club. That would be a big time snap hook if I really did this. Just a little bit goes a long way, but I'll know I'm doing it right if I hit that really low shot and that ball starts to curve from right to left. I'd love to see you guys just go ahead and overdo this at first. I'd rather see a guy play a 20 yard hook and really compress the heck out of it at first. We can always tone down, do a little bit less and straighten that shot out. But until we've really felt that heavy hit, it's a hard thing to describe until you've experienced it yourself. So really, really exaggerate on this. So this one, I'm really gonna hit that low draw. That ball really started to cut, or it really started to draw, even overdrew, but it still got some pretty good distance for a little half shot. Now these are just drills to help you get the sensation of that heavy hit. It's basically just a giant you know, chip shot, punch shot that we're hitting here. As you get more comfortable with that, now let's try to keep that feeling of a heavy hit, but let's gradually get our stance more back to normal. So if this is the drill that we just did, feet facing in front, really got a lot of forward shaft lean, hooking that ball. I want you to gradually start to get your stance closer to, to, to normal. So start to get your toes pointing a little bit more back toward this golf ball and try to recreate that same heavy hit that you had when you were really exaggerating. There we go. So that one was nice draw, really low. Those are almost getting to the green from 150 yards with a little punch eight iron. 
that's just how much energy is getting transferred in this ball. So then now once I get comfortable with that, I'm gonna go from here and I'm gonna go a little bit more toward a normal stance. I'm gonna hit a few more, see if I can get that nice, heavy, low penetrating ball flight. And then I'm gonna go back to my normal stance and I'm gonna try to recreate the same feel. It should be normal than your, or lower than your normal ball flight. It should turn over a little bit more right to left probably than your normal ball flight. But again, we can always tone that down a little bit. I just want you to get, get you guys really over compressing the golf ball here at first. So after I've done these drills, I'm gradually gonna go back to my normal stance, making sure that I try to get that forward shaft lean with each one, really compress the golf ball. You guys are gonna hit some great shots. Hitting behind the ball, that either means thinning the ball where it just kind of shoots and dribbles across the fairway or into the green, that's embarrassing, or flat out cold chunking the ball. That's probably the most frustrating and the most embarrassing thing you can do in golf. You make that full swing, you chunk it, it barely just kind of squirts down the fairway and it is like you just want to break all of your clubs. It's so frustrating when that happens. So let's talk about what's really going on when you hit behind the golf ball and how to get that divot in front. And I have a very simple work along with you for, for you today. Just grab a club right now. Let's start to make these swings. And if you do what I say here, we're gonna be getting that divot in front of the golf ball very, very consistently in just a matter of minutes here. So grab a club, let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you saw in those last videos, the most common thing that I see when someone is hitting behind the golf ball, and if you hit behind the golf ball, I almost promise that you're doing at least one, if not all of these things. Commonly what happens is, a player will stand up or lose their posture, so my hips start to go toward the golf ball. This gets me farther away from the golf ball, and now all of a sudden I feel like I have to kind of flip at it, so I'm reaching to get to the golf ball. On top of that, the most common pattern with this is to be falling back on the right side as this happening. So I'm standing up, I'm flipping, and I'm falling back on my right foot. That brings my low point down here behind the golf ball. So if you look at this slow motion, see how my club is actually grounding out behind the golf ball first? That's either gonna do one of two things. You're gonna cold chunk it because you're hitting the ground hard enough and it's stopping the club, or you're barely gonna miss the ground. Your club's gonna be on the way up coming into the ball, and you're gonna hit a lot of thin shots, or you're barely gonna have to pick it clean. A good surefire way of seeing if this is you do you feel like you have to fluff the ball up on a nice, perfect lie to make good contact? Or can you put the ball down on bare ground and make good contact? If I have to fluff the ball up, if I'm hitting behind it, this is absolutely what's going on. So let's break it down into three pieces. The first one being the standing up. Now what happens when I stand up, usually what's going on here is that I feel like I need to make room to throw my hands at it. So we have to get used to the hands actually being closer to the ground, which is the second thing that we'll work on here. But I wanna cover the golf ball. You hear pros talk about it all the time. I'm gonna talk about exactly what this is. So when I cover the golf ball, what's happening here is my upper body is staying down. So my chest is more facing toward the ground rather than doing this and coming away from it. My hips are staying back and I'm clearing out of the way. Now what that allows me to do is get my weight in front, get this forward shaft lean of the club and when I have this shaft leaning forward, I can hit the ball first and then the ground. That gives me a lot of consistency. Mainly because, or one of the reasons is because if I have this shaft leaning back, you'll see how I'm gonna make contact more toward the bottom of the golf club. As I lean the shaft farther and further forward, you can see how now that brings the contact point up the face. So I can now come down, I don't have to be as precise, and I'm gonna hit a little higher on the face more toward the sweet spot, even if, I, even if I don't touch the ground at all. If I'm flipping, standing up, then I'm gonna hit behind it. So here's what I want you to do for this drill. Drop the club for a second. Let's do about 20 reps, putting your arms side, uh, out to the sides of your body. And then as you're gonna rotate back, make a good full rotation going back, and I'm keeping my arms kind of pointing down to this golf ball. And then as I come down, here's my downswing, here's halfway down, and here's contact when I'm about 45 degrees open. Notice how I'm still down in my posture, everything's coming down, that would be contact. If I grab this club again, let me go ahead and rest it here. Here's my contact position, hips, shoulders, arms, everything open 45 degrees. Now all I have to do, because I've stayed in my posture, is grab this golf club, put it on the golf ball, and you notice how everything's in a very pro-like position here, like you see on the PJ Tour. Everything's open, club shaft leaning forward, very easy to hit in this golf ball. So 20 reps, coming back and through, pausing at contact, 
and then coming all the way around to a good full finish. That's gonna look something like this. Keeping my arms pointing down, there's contact. I get that feeling of what my body would feel like, and then I'm coming all the way through. So 20 reps of that, then grab a club. The fact that you're tilting forward, I'm not doing this. I don't wanna see, I don't wanna see this coming up out of my posture. The fact that my arms are staying tilted down, my shoulders are staying tilted down, that helps keep me in my posture. So 20 reps of that, then I'm ready to go ahead and grab a golf club and make a swing. There we go, so we can see that one. I brushed a little bit of grass in front of the golf ball, made sure I took a little bit of a divot there, but we're seeing nice and clean, good distance with that four iron, nice and straight too. So even though I hit the ground, it was in front of the golf ball. And I have this white line here, so it makes it easier to see where that contact is happening. Let's go on to the next piece. So now we're in our posture a little bit. That takes care of the standing up. Now let's work on the flipping. When you're hitting behind the golf ball, a lot of times what's going on there, that a little bit lower, I don't wanna cheat here. A lot of times what's going on, I stand up and I flip, I meaning I'm scooping these hands. That's an effort to try to hit the golf ball a little harder or to get a little higher in the air. Either way, what pros are doing is they're getting their hands actually closer to the ground. So I'm gonna exaggerate here. Imagine that I'm making my downswing and my hands scrape the ground. We're gonna see this club already on the turf here. And as my hands move up, the club could glide level for a very long period of time. You call that a flat spot or I call that impact glide. And what that means is the best players in the world, and you'll see with this divot is nice and thin, I'm not chopping down in the ground. That means if I get my hands low enough coming into contact, my hands can move up and my club is gonna glide through the turf. If I'm staying back and I'm flipping, my hands are high and now I have to throw the ball, to throw the club head down at the ball and it's gonna be a very kind of V-shaped divot. Impact glide or having those hands low as my hands work back up and again, my body gets opening up like we just worked on, now that club can glide through the turf. So again, another 20 reps. Here's what we're gonna practice. Number one, get those hands as low as you can as they're in front of your right leg. Then from there, feel like you're gonna have the hands raise up and hit that divot in front of the golf ball, just like that. So I'll do about five or 10 practice swings here just to show you, or a few practice swings. But I want it to look just like that. You can feel how your club just brushes the turf rather than slamming down into it. So 20 reps of that, get the hands as low as you can, brush the turf. Sorry, my watch is going off on me here. So my hands are as low as I can, I'm brushing the turf as I come through. And we're gonna see that divot in front again, nice forward shaft lane. Even there, even though I didn't quite hit enough ground, I brushed the turf, but where I was gliding through contact, you really don't see any difference. The shot came out just as good, even though I hit it a little bit thin for myself, speaking for myself. I could have taken a little bit more turf and it would have been even better. But again, you have that forgiveness, you have that consistency. If my hands are high, there's no way to reach this golf ball without flipping. If my hands are lower, so you see as my hands come down, now I get that forward shaft lane. So it's really crucial to work on getting your hands lower. Finally here, let's work on getting your weight to the left. The biggest mistake I see with this, everybody wants their weight more to the, to the left side, so they preset it to the left. And I hear a lot of players, or a lot of coaches telling players, if you're struggling getting to the left, set up with your weight on your left side. What I found happens when we do this, is as the weight, we make our backswing, we realize I'm too far left now. I've got my weight on my left side, I'm way left over here, and I know if I swing down, I'm just gonna chop into that ball. So your body, being pretty smart, realizes I've got to go back to the right and you end up falling back. Again, it looks something like this. As you make your back swing too far left and then you fall back, stand up and flip. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. It's not going to be as consistent. What I want you to do is to actually start out with your weight on your right foot and specifically on the inside of the right foot before you even swing. So I don't want it to be way out here on the outside of the foot. I want it to feel like the inside, like almost like I'm gripping with the inside cleats. I'm kind of digging those into the ground a little bit. That's gonna put some pressure on my right foot. As I make my takeaway, then my pressure is gonna get as far as it can on the right side or as far as it will in the swing. So what I mean by this is when players are messing this up, 
they're too far left to start and they don't get the weight to the right side. Then in the downswing, they adjust and fall back. Here's the thing that's gonna solve that for you. We need to get the weight to the right much earlier and then we need to start going to the left much earlier in the downswing. So when we look at pressure plates, shows the foot pressure with the world's best players, what we find time and time again is that the best players in the world max out pressure into the right foot very early in the backswing. You're pretty much maxed out by the time your left arm reaches parallel with the ground. As they complete their swing, now I'm going to the left. So here's the right way to do that. I'm gonna do a follow along for you. Number one, set up with that weight inside of your right foot at a dress. As you do your takeaway, push the right foot very slightly into the ground. Now from here, get your weight back to the left and then swing down. Now that sounds really complicated. That's why there's a great drill that's gonna make you do this every single time. It's a little step drill. All you're gonna do here is as you make your takeaway, lift up your left foot just very slightly off the ground, then push into your left foot and swing down. So it looks like this. I'm gonna start with my feet a little closer together. I lift my foot to start. That gets all my weight on my right side, 100% of the weight on the right side. As I push into the ground before I start my downswing, now my weight's back left, just like I want it to be. And then when I finish, I finish with my weight on my left side. So if I do that, it looks like this. Early step, push, then swing down. A good 20 reps of that. Step early, push into the ground, then swing down. As I make that one fluid motion, it looks like this. And you can see how my weight easily moves from right to left. So my weight is moving to the left as I hit this golf ball. You do that drill 20, 30 times, it's gonna feel very natural. The biggest mistake I see is players waiting to take their step until the downswing. That's not what we want. We wanna take the step, push to the left, then take the downswing. Just like you're throwing a baseball. I step, weight's left, then I throw. So do that 20 times, get that rhythm, and finally, we're gonna be able to take this nice divot in front of the golf ball again, really hit this clean. There we go, and I really tried to exaggerate even hitting down a little bit more into that one, but you'll see how it didn't dig. It's a nice, thin, square divot. I could hit the ground pretty hard, and I made sure I'm making ball first contact every single time. Now, where do we go from here? One of the things I mentioned is we gotta get these hands low and that club releasing in front of the golf ball. We have to have this shaft leaning forward. I call that the straight line release in the top speed golf system. And what that means is the very first time my club passes my hands or catches up with my hands, the very first time that my club shaft splits my forearms should be about 45 degrees in front of the golf ball. Now that's an easy thing to do once you learn the proper way to do it. And I have an awesome bonus video I'm gonna play a preview of that here in a second. All you do is just click the card that pops up on the screen or the link down below in the description. You'll get started right away on that straight line release, build on what you did here today, and man, contact is gonna get so easy that you can't wait to go play golf. So best of luck, let's go ahead and get started in the straight line release right now. Well, a common misconception I see is that we wanna create lag and we just wanna hold that lag all the way on through contact and get as much lag as we can coming through contact. And that's simply not true. In the release section, we're gonna talk about how to turn that lag into energy, how to turn that into speed so that you can hit it very far and do it, like we mentioned, without hardly any effort at all. And as we're coming through contact, we're gonna fully release this angle as we're about 45 past contact. So if I draw you know, a 45 degree angle, I should be looking at both arms, nice and straight, the club splitting those arms. So the, by releasing the club, by getting this angle to release as we're coming through contact, that's what's gonna create the speed. Our hands are moving a very short distance, our club is moving a very long distance through contact, and it creates that whip-like effect. Very different swings hitting the exact same position. So first, let's take a look at Dustin Johnson, releasing the club 45 past. And the reason we're gonna see such similar, or such different swings producing similar positions is that this is the real physics of how this has to happen. Here we're looking at Sergio Garcia. Again, we're gonna to see tons